How you doing guys, welcome to another video. Still working on topic 10, this is volume six and we look at additional naming. Let's go. Okay, so volume six, we look at additional naming. We look at naming amines, ketones, ethers, carboxylic acids. The IB applications are we need to be able to name these different functional groups with up to six carbons in the chain, including only one of the functional groups. So they probably won't mix the functional groups up on you. I probably will in the video just to get a bit of understanding. Okay, so amines. Now amines are the one that people can never agree on. For me, you need to name them a certain way if they're a primary amine or a certain way if they're a secondary amine. So in primary amines, only one of the hydrogen atoms has been replaced. That means that the amine group will be at the end of the chain. So the amine group will contain NH2 at the end of the molecule or the start of the molecule, whatever way you want to think of it. A simple rule for naming amines is if the NH2 is at the start or the end of the chain, then we name it at the end of the chain. And if the NH2 is a branch, that is, it's in the middle of the, the chain, a secondary amine, we name it as an amino. So a primary amine will be called a something amine, and a secondary amine will be called an amino something. So for this first example, we have our NH2 at the start of the chain. We have two carbons. That's a primary amine. So I'm going to name that amine group at the end of the name because it's a primary. Now we've got something with two carbons, which is eth, so this is ethanamine, the amine at the end of the chain. If we have a look at the one below it, here we have the amine group in the middle of the chain. So I would refer to this amine as being a branch. Now when we have a secondary amine, we name that as an amino. So we put the amino at the front rather than at the back, but they're still the naming the same thing. It's just a different way of naming it, just to make it a little bit more obvious. Now I need to put a number here because I don't know where that amine group is, so I name it as a 2-amino propane. Because somebody else in some other part of the world could name this as propen 2-amine, or 2 propen amine. Um, I think I've written F there. No, it should be prop 2 propen amine, but I believe the correct way of doing it is the first one. So stick to that little rule. If it's at the end of the chain, name the amine at the end. If it's in the middle, name it as an amino. Okay, for this one up here, 2 amino methyl propane. So we start off with by drawing the longest chain. So here we have propane, which has three carbons. So I put my three carbons in a row. I've got a branch being the methyl group coming off the second carbon. So I've, I've got to put that in as well. And then I have my amine group coming off the second carbon as well. So that one there, that would actually be a tertiary amine, but it would still be named in the same way that a secondary amine would be named. And then down below it, my fault, I've actually got the same thing. So I'm pretty sure that it's called 2-amino-methylpropane. Here you can see that I've identified the amine group as being in the middle, so it's a secondary, or in this case a tertiary amine. We've got the methyl group coming off the second carbon. There's no need for a number for that methyl group because there's only one position for it. If it was on the one or the three carbon, it would actually be a different compound. So no need for a number. Okay, an aldehyde is another class of compounds, and it has the CHO functional group. And when we name an aldehyde, we don't need a number to indicate the position because it is always found at the end or, or the start of the molecule. So the CHO functional group contains the anal suffix, so you change the last name to anal, and the homodular series would be the loss of a hydrogen and then a CHO functional group. So here we have a compound with two carbons, so it would be called ethan -al. No need for a number because the anal part comes at the back of the molecule. Now when we write the semi-structural formula, CH3CHO, it's important that we have the H before the O because we want it to be an aldehyde, not a hydroxide. The one below it, pro three carbons, propen-al. 
Further to the right, here we have a chlorine on the chain. The number one carbon is the aldehyde, so we have three chloro, something with three carbons, propanal, three chloropropanal. Here we have something with four carbons and two aldehyde functional groups. So in this case, when we have two of the same thing, we want to refer to it as a diol. Do we need to have a number here with those owls? No, we don't, because we know that they can only be at the end. So that would be referred to as butanediol or dibutanol. Either of those would be acceptable. Remember with the semi-structural formula, CHO, not COH, because OH represents an alcohol or a hydroxy functional group. The third one for today is a ketone, and a ketone contains the carbonyl functional group, which is a COC functional group. The ketone functional group requires at least three carbon atoms, and the, suffix, the name is a suffix, and it becomes own, so propen, own, etc. The carbonyl functional group is a carbon double bonded to an oxygen. So here, this first one, we have three carbons, our functional group is right in the middle. We don't need a number for this. It's just called propanone because there's only one spot for that carbonyl functional group to be. In the second example, we have four carbons, but again, we only have one spot for that functional group. If I rotated it around, it would be the same thing. So this would be known as butanone. Pentantuone, now that we've got five carbons, this is the first one where we need to refer to a number. So here we would have a CH3, and then our ketone functional group, our carbonyl carbon, followed by our other three carbons. The carbonyl functional group is in the second position. If we move that carbonyl functional group to the third carbon, then we have pentanthreone. So when there is more than one possibility, we must include the number. With semi-structural formula, it would be fine to separate that functional group so you can see it, or it could be simply just CH3, CH2, CO, CH2, CH3. If they specifically ask you to write semi-structural formula, you must write semi-structural formula. For a ketone, you're looking for the COC functional group. Okay, carboxylic acids, they contain the carboxy or carboxyl functional group, which is the COOH. Now, the COOH, the carbon that is connected, that will be the number one carbon in the chain. Carboxylic acids, they're always named as a suffix where we replace the last name with oic acid. So in the first example, we have five carbons in a row. Five carbons is pent, so we would change the name to penten oic acid. The number one carbon is the first carbon with the carbonyl functional group. Here we have just one carbon, so that's known as meth, methanoic acid. If we go down to the one on the left, again, that carboxy functional group is the number one carbon. Here we have some chlorines on the chain as well. So we have four carbons in a row. We need to say where those chloros are, so we have three, three, dichlorobutanoic acid. I need two threes because the chlorines could be on different carbons. So I must say that they're on the same carbon and I use the prefix di to say that there are two of them. For this one here, remember the carboxy functional group always is the number one carbon. So here we have three methyl, we have a methyl branch on the third carbon, butanoic acid. This one here, we have three carbons in a row, starting with our carboxy functional group, so that would be propanoic acid, a nice, simple one. Another important thing about carboxylic acids, I've got the picture of the wasp there. These are the parts of the wasp thing that make you actually a little bit itchy and a little bit irritated. So carboxylic acids found in wasp stings. If we have propanedioic acid, Di meaning two, it just means we've got a carboxy functional group at either end of the chain and three carbons in a row. Okay, ethers. 
Ethers are a class of compound containing the COC functional group with a carbon single bond to an oxygen, single bond to another carbon, different from the ketone functional group. Esters are named by identifying the shortest alkyl chain and adding oxy and then naming the longest hydrocarbon chain. So think about cutting the ether up. So here we have two alkyl functional groups. We have a meth, which is the shortest. So we say methoxy, and then we name the longest part, which is ethane. Methoxy, ethane. Here we have two methyl groups. So we can actually name this as just methoxy, methane. Name the shortest, and then name the longest. The one on the right, the far one, again cut it in terms of the functional group. We have ethane, so ethoxy, and then we have something with three carbons, propane. Ethoxy, propane. Okay, volume six, some top tips. Remember to number the longest chain. Remember that the functional groups at the end, you must start with the numbering from that location. And then just think about priority. Usually things that change the last name have a greater priority than branches and, sub and functional groups. Thanks for watching guys. Don't forget, drop a like on the video, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you next time.